uh, went to the bank, um, I went to the post office this past week, and one of the ministers that we know sent us a check towards our debt destruction. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's just stay after it, guys. Let's stay on top of it. Hallelujah. It's not, not time to let up. Um, as you can see, now you can't really see it. It's, it's hard to see it because th this thing compresses down when they, when they fix it. But we are actually below the 20,000 mark. This is April. Thirty-five, five eighty. Thirty-five was the bottom number. We're below. We're below twenty. Just, just got under by twenty dollars. What we're under. <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. I'm like, Shanda. Yeah, we're getting so far ahead of schedule. It's not even funny. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, we were, we were actually looking at somewhere. Next, end of June, 1st of July, being paid off. We're going to be paid off in, in October, 1st of November, if not earlier. I, I'm thinking earlier. Hallelujah. I, I just kind of got where I'm going. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got to go get one, one big poster made up with a big top being blown off and stuff, you know, so we can bring it in the day that it's done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So we're excited. We're watching it disappear. Amen. And I mean, just watching it disappear. It's just a beautiful thing to watch and um, exciting to watch, actually. I mean, you know, just kind of, uh, I, I look back over some stuff over the past few years and I thought, um, you know, we, we were in trouble, made some decisions we probably shouldn't have made, but, you know, God's forgiving and God can restore and um, financially. And, and now we're watching him bring us out. Um, one of our accounts that we, we, we've been paying off was at uh, over 27000 five years ago. I look back at it five years ago. We're supposed to pay it off in September this year. Uh, it's down to 2600 Yeah. I mean, it's, that's the next one to go. It's going this, uh, this, in May, it's gone. It's going out the door. Hallelujah. If four months early on the, on the yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, it's... No, 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 hey, hey, goodbye, praise God. We're just watching debt disappear, and uh, then we'll have two, two accounts left to get rid of, and um, praise the Lord, and then we will we'll be totally debt-free. So look, look at that. Can you, can, you, can you even fathom? Look at that. I mean, just, there's just in the natural mind, you look at that, and you go, how in the world did this church in this amount of time go from 35, 580 to 28 to 29, 9? In five and a half, well, not, well, almost six months. Not, no, almost five months. Almost. Huh? 19.9. Did I say 29.9? Yeah, 19.9. 19.9. I mean, that's $15,600 in, um, in five and a half months. Well, no, no, no. Four months. Four and a half months. Because we didn't even announce it until the very first of January. And then nobody started doing anything until the middle of January. So four and a half months, four and a half months. I said four. I did, I'll probably brother Hagen. Four and a half months. Well, praise the Lord. On that note, it's time to give. Praise the Lord. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. If you need a special envelope for uh, the, the debt destruction, a uh, gift, you can raise your hand for that with two fingers, and they'll get you one of those little red envelopes. Uh, also, if you need, um, I mean, if you want to give electronically, you can go ahead and ring those bad babies up. Hallelujah. We, uh, we love to see those come in. Hallelujah. They come in during the week. We love that. I don't care. Well, you know, if it comes in on Wednesday night, I don't, and, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, I don't care. Hallelujah. But it's, it's coming in, and we're seeing the debt go. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to see this church get uh, faithful and behind this and committed and then watching God work and uh, then add to. Hallelujah. See, that's how, that's how it works when you step out in faith. God adds to. God multiplies. God expediates. Can you, can you say amen? I would say right now we're at least um, seven months ahead of schedule. At least seven months ahead of schedule. You know, but the Lord spoke, spoke to me and said we would be out of debt in, eight, in, 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 in uh, at least 18 months. You know, I mean, um, in, in in less than 18 months, basically, you know, 18 months we'd be out of debt if we followed this plan. And uh, we're, we're now looking at 11, actually, that, probably more like 10, okay, right now. So that puts us eight months ahead of schedule. Hallelujah. 
Can you, can you shout glory? Hallelujah. Well, you know, God is good all the time. Hallelujah. You step out in faith, he steps out with you. He meets you. Amen. Hallelujah. This, this is a faith lesson for you. Understand, when God's doing these things, just don't say, well, that's the church. God's, this, this is a faith lesson. When Jesus walked by and did the curse the fig tree, it was a faith lesson. Come back by later, and you know, and Peter called to remembrance, uh, said, Behold, Master, the fig tree you curse is withered away. And Jesus said, Have faith in God, and taught them on faith. God's teaching you about faith right now. Hear the word, act on the word, do the word, and then watch it happen. Amen? Hallelujah. I can tell you there's no way in the natural we should be doing this. But faith is not based on the natural. Amen? Faith gets out beyond that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is anybody excited about that besides me? Hallelujah. I, I, actually, I've been, I've been trying to keep like a, a running chart of, you know, payoff dates of different things, different you know, accounts and moving them out and blanking them out the zeros. I gave up. I can't keep up with it. <laughs> it's happening. I have to keep redoing the chart, making it less. I'm like, oh. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You ready to give? Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offering. We thank you that people are blessed. We thank you that you open up heaven's windows and empty out on us blessings. We don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Go ahead. Be blessed as you give. Hallelujah. Again, if you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and send that. Praise God. Uh, those of you watching by, by television, if you're watching on the Internet and going, I'd like to be a part of what God's doing there, uh, there's, some, uh, there's a uh, little thing up there on your screen that says online giving. You can get involved with that right there and, and give through Square Cash or through PayPal. Um, there's, there's two couple of ways we receive electronic donations. PayPal is one of them. And then the, through, your Square, through a Square Cash app, Square Cash app. It's a little green dollar sign app. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's probably the easiest way, but PayPal works too. Hallelujah. Praise God. So be faithful with your, um, and I'm, y'all are, be, remain faithful with your, your uh, commitments as we watch this continue to dive and go down. Well, you know, the, the debt go down, but the thermometer go up. This is a reverse thermometer. Okay? It's a reverse thermometer. That's why it's green. It's not red. Okay. Red, you know, red, you know, it goes up in numbers. This is a green one. We're going up and we're going down in numbers. Hallelujah. We're going. That means we're, we're going to blow the top off and go for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Children's Church Preschool, you guys are dismissed to go to your classes at this time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I just can't, I can't help keep talking about it because I keep getting so excited about it. I'm like, oh, gosh. Lord, you're good. Hallelujah. And, and we're not going lacking anywhere else. Now, we, we have, the church is on a cash-only basis right now. So that's what, we've got a spending freeze. I mean, it's going to have to be something major for us to spend money. I mean, the deal of the century can show up and we don't do it. We had it happen last week. Brother Bill came and said, we, got, we can get another camera, to get rid of our bad camera that we have, and it's only $278. Love that deal. Just love that deal. Uh-uh. We're, 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 we're getting out of debt. Hallelujah. And then it's cash only. We're going to do some missions trips. We're going to do things for Jesus. Hallelujah. Stop paying debt. I said, stop paying debt. Debt could be a millstone around your neck and, and, and hold you back. Hallelujah. Praise God. A couple weeks now, last Sunday we were, we were preaching on, uh, you know, it was Easter Sunday we were preaching. I actually did kind of go into a, a Resurrection Sunday service. Unusual for me to, to go theme. Hallelujah. But I did. Hallelujah. But this week we're going to go back to our service from a couple weeks ago where we started teaching on tithing and the power of the tithe. Hallelujah. And so uh, we, um, we read initially from Genesis chapter 14, verse 20. And blessed be the Most High, who has yet delivered thine enemies into the hand, thine hand, and he gave him, that is, Abram gave to Melchizedek tithes of all. And so we said last time, you know, that the tithing is worship. Part of your worship of God is through the tithe. Amen. Now, 
Uh, we, we, we addressed this a couple weeks ago, but just for those maybe visiting us this morning for the first time, or those watching us for the first time, um, we have narratives in the church, and primarily, now I hate to say this, primarily in the word of faith charismatic circles, we get this, this narrative that I don't tithe, I give. The Lord told me that there's, you know, not, I don't have to tithe, I just give. Well, number one, the Lord didn't tell you something he didn't say in his word and go, go against his word. Um, I love the camp I'm in. Now, I grew up, I grew up classical Pentecostal. I grew up in the Pentecostal Holiness Church. And I, I'll be honest with you, I love my roots. I thank God for what, I, what, what deposits were made in my life in that church. Uh, the things of the Spirit that I learned, the move of the Spirit, to, be, uh, to have that heritage, uh, I, will, I will never demean that. I love what I got there. Amen? And then God brought me into the Word of Faith, charismatic uh, uh, re renewal. And I, and I love what I got there. So I, I, but I can be constructively critical of us. You don't go to the Baptist church and they say they don't believe in tithing. And we think we, you know, and I'm, I'm going to talk about some of our arrogance. <clears throat> we know so much. We know it. We word people. We got the word. And the Baptist got better than most of us on, on, on that. Hello? Can you demean the Baptist because they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost spoke, speaking in tongues. And uh, turn right around and then go against the word of God on, on tithing. <clears throat> Amen. Now listen. We're, supp we're supposed to you know, take the whole word of God, not just the parts you like. And a goosebump is not the move of the Spirit. Hello. Just because your hair stood up on the back of your neck doesn't mean it was the Holy Ghost. I remember one time, the very, very first time I saw a Blair Witch um, commercial for the Blair Witch movies, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. It won't the Holy Ghost. It was a ghost, but it won't the Holy One. It was demonic. Okay? So just because you get a goosebump don't mean that God's told you something. That's why you got to be people of the Word and of the Spirit. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. So we love our Baptist brothers. Love our, you know, love our uh, Episcopal brothers and Presbyterian brothers and Catholic brothers and, and sisters. I'm just using that in generic, uh, genderly, genderlessly. Amen. We love the, the body of Christ. Amen. But it seems to be in our circles is where we hear more about, I don't believe in tithing, I just give, than any other place I ever go around. We get real spiritual. Did you not read Hebrews? Hello. Am I, am I right, Brother Bill? Yeah. And Brother Bill's been around a few times. Been around the block a few more times than I have. When I first got saved, he was already on the radio preaching. Down in WBZ. Do you even remember the call letters? I can't. That's, that's my hometown, and you don't even you. <clears throat> WBZQ, Christian Radio, Greenville, North Carolina, 10-something on the dial. 1080 on the dial, I think it was, right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Copeland, Bailey, Hagen. I mean, you had them right there sandwiched together. Hallelujah. And, um, but anyway, and so um, we come up with these narratives because we think it sounds spiritual. Listen, if it's not the word, it's not spiritual. If it doesn't line up with the word, it's not spiritual. Because you've got a flutter and you've got somebody, you know, and it sounds so deep. I don't tithe, I give. I mean, we say it with such, you know, mm, well, if you ain't giving 10 percent you ain't tithing number one you're robbing god to give him money that's like me walking over here to jeff taking his wallet out of his back pocket taking that 20 dollars giving his wallet back then walking over and giving him 20 dollars hey brother i want to give you something <laughs> robbing from somebody to give it back to him ain't, ain't is not giving
I guess Brother Bill got that one nailed on there. He says, I sound like the government. <laughs> you know, they take all of our tax money, and then they hold, it, hold you hostage to give it back to you for education and stuff, saying you got to do this, this, this to get it back. Yeah, hallelujah. Well, moving right along. <laughs> Tithing is worship. It is, it is a form, part of our worship. Tithing puts us in remembrance of the blessings of God. You all remember that from two weeks ago. And then third, we covered last, that last time. <coughs> tithing brings restoration. When you stop, when you start back and you, become, you get back into what God tells you, he'll bring restoration. Amen. So we were going to get to this morning, tithing brings blessing and protection. Look with me, if you will, to the third proverb. Hallelujah. We more accurately would call it, and when we get to Psalms and we get to Proverbs, to call it the third proverb or the second Psalm or things like that, than the chapter, because they're really not chapters. They, are, um, they were written individually and then collected. Hallelujah. Whereas our books were written as, a, as, as straight line letters or uh, writings, and then we divided them up into chapter and verse, okay? But proverb, the third proverb, looking at um, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with all thy substance, or with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. How much, which, which fruits? Don't want no leftover junk. Don't be bringing the Lord the rotten stuff. Hello? I mean, listen. We do this. We'll go get something. We'll get the best out of it. And then we'll offer somebody the leftovers. Part we don't like. Let me get my, let me get my church finger up. You know I'm talking right. That's not... I mean, you know, probably if somebody didn't have anything to eat or whatever, they got, they, got, they, got, they got the crumbs. They probably have, they got something to eat. But it's not like you're giving them the best first. The Lord says, honor him with the first fruits of your increase. You bring him the best. Hello? Y'all here, y'all going home. You don't, you don't go pick out the lamb that's weakly, sickly, about to die anyway, and go give it to the Lord. Now, no, that shows something about your heart. Y'all act like the first church of the frozen chosen out there. Now, if I was talking about the blood, you can have what you say. We're going to walk, walk in victory. You'd be shouting, oh, yes. If you start talking like this, y'all get mighty quiet. Yeah. Yeah, I know I'm standing on some toes. They open them out, they'd be going, ow. <laughs> Hallelujah. But no, honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of thine increase. Why? Why? So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. In other words, when you honor the Lord, when you put him first, when you give him the best, he's going to honor you and bless you, glory to God. Amen. Yeah, I mean, listen. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his own heart. God just don't bless you big time just to be blessing certain people big time. And he doesn't be, get chinchy with people just to be chinchy with them. He said according to your heart. And if you get sparing, you get sparing. If you give leftover junk, you get leftover junk. Well, I don't like that. I'm under grace. It don't matter. Tune in to somebody else. Go find you one of the nutbag places that don't preach the word. You got to stay with the word. When the Bible said, and now what I just quoted to you was New Testament, by the way. Paul writing to the church of Corneth. Hello. Are y'all here? Y'all gone home? Feel, I feel the breeze from the ice out there. Hallelujah. Now, he says here, honor. Tithing, bring that first fruits, bring that tenth, bring it first. And honor him. Recognize. See, we have to continue to recognize who our source is. 
How many have a job somewhere? All right. How many have a job somewhere? Are you retired and you're still receiving income from that? that? Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. There we go. Got people that go on. I ain't working nowhere anymore. That's not your source. Now, you're faithful to go to work. You were faithful to work and retire. Da, 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 da. I mean, you know, that's not your source. God's your source. Listen, you could lose your retirement. Ask everybody who worked for GE. And all those people, that guy came in and, and shut down all their retirement funds. Just let the people without nothing. And with just that one company, he did that all over the place. And all the, all the stockholders were thrilled because their bottom line went up. But all the employees lost their retirement and everything. Fired people, you know, and they paid him $20 million at the company to do it because the stockholders got happy. See? You, you, can lose your, you can lose your job. Now, let me say this. It's easy when you've got plenty of money coming in to go, God's my source. What do you do when there's nothing coming in? Hello, I'm serious, folks. You're going to have to trust the Lord. You're going to have to believe God. Now, listen, when you've been tithing while you were working and you had money coming in and you were tithing, now you can come back and say, Lord, I honored you with my substance. I honored you with the first fruits of my increase. And you said, wait a second, now, don't, don't, this is not cocky. <coughs> this is not arrogant. <clears throat> this is not in your face of God. But you said, if I did that, my barns would be filled with plenty, and my presses would burst out with new wine. You would bring me prosperity. That's, those, are, those are prosperity terms. You said it, Lord, and I was faithful. Now, I don't have a job right now. I've lost my job. I've lost the source, of, the source of natural income is not coming in anymore. But you said that if I would honor you, this would happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm cashing in on it right now. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Why? Because tithing brings blessing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Malachi chapter 3. Or for all of our Italian friends, the book of Malachi. Hey. Hey, Malachi. Hey. Okay? Verse 7, um, well, we, better, we might want to need to back up from there just a tad bit. Let's see where we need to go. Malachi chapter 3. Oh, well, just um, verse 6. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances. Now, let me tell you something, folks. This is, this is the problem in the church is we can get so comfortable doing things our way and the way we want to do them, we can go away from God's ordinances. We can move away from the way the Lord said do it. Don't let me feel that cold breeze. We, we can begin to move away from the way God said do it. Hello? We can come up with ideas so many times we're, we, we, we run around as pastors and ministries looking for what church has a lot of people to figure out how to follow them and get the same results. Well, I'll be honest with you, there's some people I look I won't, and I watch what they're doing, and I'm thinking, I don't want to get their results. They got a lot of people. I said, they got a lot of people. They, got, you know, they, they can wear whatever clothes they want to wear and drive whatever car they want to drive and live whatever the house they want to live in, but they're not preaching the word. They're saying stuff that's so unbiblical, you, you, your, your neck pulls a chief inspector Dreyfus when he hears the name Clouseau. Some of y'all remember the old Pink Panther movies. Every time the you, chief inspector Dreyfus would hear uh, uh, Inspector Clouseau's name, his neck would start going. He'd, start, he'd get the twitches. Anybody remember that? Yeah. And you listen to some people preaching, you're going, your mouth just falls open. And everybody's going, hey, man, I just love so-and-so. I love their men. I love them. I love them. we got to get over loving men and start loving the Word. 
We can be grateful to men of God who walk in, and walk in integrity and will stay with the Word and never leave the Word no matter what, no matter what it costs them. And my example for that is Jesus. Because he stood up one day and said, said, you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And everybody except the 12 packed up and left. We don't have much of that anymore. If we're going to lose everybody, we won't say it. Hello? So people won't say it. The new narrative is we don't. We just love them. Well, Jesus loved them, but he told them the truth. See, when you love them, you tell them the truth. You don't, you don't sugarcoat it. You don't back off of it. And you don't give them what they want to hear. The Bible did not, uh, con the Bible did not encourage that. Called people that did that, you know, people, the people who wanted that were calling the pe people who heaped unto themselves teachers having itching ears. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because you're going to find people here to tell you what you want to hear. Thank you for your enthusiasm. So, even from the days of your father, you're gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? He didn't answer that yet. Because about another question, will a man rob God? Yet ye, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And God says, in tithes and offerings. Now, right here is what he's telling you. They, they didn't keep his ordinance of tithing and giving. And they robbed him. And God says, you're cursed with a curse. Even for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Let me say this. It's not that God came down at that moment and went, I'm cursing you. When Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, the curse came on the earth. And God gave methods and means by which you could circumvent the curse that was on the earth. Now we know from studying Scripture that the three curses that came, that the threefold curse that came on man was spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. Okay? God made a means to address each of those things. There's divine healing for, your, for, for sickness. There is a new birth for spiritual death. And there is biblical, pro, biblical prosperity <clears throat> for poverty. How do you get out of poverty? By following his ordinance to tithe and to give. Amen. That is a biblical process. That is a biblical means. That is the biblical way out. Now, what happens when you don't? You're under the curse. Hello. Well, Christ says, redeem me from the curse of law, being made a curse for me, for it's written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Not if you don't do what he says. You can put yourself right back under the curse. You can put yourself under the curse of sickness. You can put yourself where the curse that came on spiritual death can come, that can come on you, not that you die spiritually, but the, the, the results and the consequences of it can begin to affect your life. Because you don't walk according to the Word. Somebody shake their head, hold up their finger, somebody put their head down and say, oh, thank you, or help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Lord, help me. Because it's still true. God says you're cursed with a curse, even this whole nation. Why? They had walked away from his ordinance. They were robbing God, and they were putting themselves under the curse of the world instead of under an open heaven of blessing. The whole nation was living there. Now, God, listen, here's the beautiful thing. God doesn't leave them there. You bunch of ingrates, you're cursed, and walk away. This is the mercy of God. This, what I'm about to say, is the grace of God. Not that you're blessed even while you're living, while you're doing what he said not to do. Or refusing to do what he did say to do. That's not grace. Grace is that when you're in rebellion against him, 
He even in that moment, even after he's already redeemed you, after he's already made provision for you, after he's already done things for you, and you're walking in rebellion, he still will make provision to get you out of it. That's grace. That's grace. Not, you're still going to get blessed no matter what. No, you're cursed. You're living under a curse. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in mine house. Now, what's the, go back and do my ordinances. And prove me. Now, the word prove. Um, Joe Morris said this a number of years ago. He came into the church. It was ministry. And um, he, he said, you know, prove means to, to do like a scientific experiment. My word says test. But, you know, just like you put baking soda and vinegar together. How many know, have ever heard, you do that and it will erupt. And some of y'all in school made little volcanoes and had a little thing that triggered and it erupted. Things got really fancy. Started putting red food dye in it. So we got red lava coming out. You know, we got more advanced as we went along with the same experiment. God said, test me, prove me. That if you'll bring that tithe into the storehouse, he says, and prove me, saith the Lord, again, caps, small caps, Jehovah, Yahweh, the four letters, Y-H-W-H, the covenant God. The covenant God says what? Get back into covenant activity. Get back into covenant relationship <coughs> and activity with me. Uphold your end of the covenant. Hello? It's a covenant. Each party has a part to play in a covenant. Now, we get way more out of God than he gets out of us. Are you here? We're right on the other side of that deal. But we still have a role to play and a part to play. You can't be covenant breakers and expect covenant benefits. What y'all do with the amen corner? Y'all ran them out of the church. Hello? Prove me now here with said your, said your covenant God. How about that? Your covenant God. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Now, my other Bible, my Raymond Study Bible, this is my, the, the Hagen one, but it was, it was published by a different publisher, but at that, it had a, a number on the Greek that said, uh, where it said, pour you out, it said, empty out. God says, you've been robbing me, you had not been keeping my ordinances, you had, you're, cursed, you're living under the curse. Now, here's how to get out of the curse. Start tithing. Hello? Bring the tithe into the storehouse. Prove me. Watch what I'll do. Let me show out. Amen? Because you're, you're, you're back walking in covenant relationship with me. Hello? And I'm going to open up heaven's windows, and I'm not just going to pour out. I'm going to empty out blessings. So much, you can't handle it. Hello? When we make the decision to obey God, and folks, I, yeah, I use it. It's a four-letter word, and the Gracies don't like it. And well, I'm talking about the people who are over the extreme, that you can do anything you want to do, live any way you want to live, and God's just going to do all this stuff for you no matter what. That's extreme teaching. All right? I love grace. Grace is a beautiful Bible subject. The grace of God astounds and amazes me. But when people move in and wicked men move in and turn the grace of God into licentiousness or lasciviousness or wantonness, I can't stand it. Because it is deceptive and it robs people of the truth. They're robbing them of their walk with God. Hello? Hello? When we obey God, God did not suggest that we tithe. Hello? You see that commercial where the guy's driving the car and he's driving 45 and a 55? And the guy said, dude, the speed limit is 55. 
He said, that's a suggestion. Hello? See, we want to take, we want to take God's commandments and go, because there's only one commandment. Be a better Bible student than that. Hello? Re read more and, and get the full context of things before you run off and make statements that are that shallow. The greatest commandment is to love one another. I mean, to love God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. On these two hinge all the law and the prophets. Now, wait a second now. So, he didn't say they undo the law and the prophets. He said they hinge. They, they, they are taken in context of the law of love. We just we throw everything else out. All we got to do is love people. They can live in they can live in homosexuality and lesbianism, and they can come in dressed and be a woman and be a, when they're a guy and a guy when they're a girl, and you know, and we and we're gonna call them an it instead of a he or a she, and you know, we're gonna put them right in the church, put them on the platform, make them leaders in the church because we just gotta love people. No, when they just letting some man when they were just letting some man live with his stepmama in the church, Paul Paul writes a letter and barbecues them over it. You know, the guy you quote from 1 Corinthians chapter 13? That was a church he was writing to about them doing that. Hello? And he said, put him out. Turn him over to Satan. for the, I'm going to come in the spirit. I'm turning him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh to save his spirit. So he don't go to hell. So there are ordinances and there are commands of God, folks. Tithing is an ordinance of God. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you for your enthusiasm. God says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out, empty out blessings. You don't have room, room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. How many have had your finances devoured? There's a devourer out there. Yeah, every time I try to get something right, the devil comes along. I mean, something comes along and robs me. That's a devourer. We plant a collard, and, and you get lazy. You know, sometimes you just get lazy. Then the natural, you can get lazy. Now, we, we grow our own collards because they make, we got a special kind called a cabbage collard from down in eastern Carolina. They actually crossbred cabbage and collards. They look like collards, but they've got a sweeter taste than the, the, the other kind, the Morris Heading or the Georgia collard. They're more bitter. These are sweeter, especially when the frost hits them and they turn yellow. Mm. Put some fat meat in the pot and boil it and get the salt and the pepper and the fat out. And throw them collards in there. Cook them down. Take them out and drain them. And then chop them up. Glory to God. And then you take a spoon. You go across the top where all the fat, fatty water is. And get that back and put them back in. Mm, slap your mama some kind of good. Hallelujah. How did I get off on collards? You're getting lazy. Well, if you don't seven dust them at certain times of the year, put some kind of, you know, whatever, the bugs will eat them up. Go out there, you got, they look like Swiss cheese collards. You got holes all in them. The bugs will eat them alive. Although I don't know what kind of insects it is, but they will eat them alive. Yep. And you're out there going, my, my collar plant got, I mean, and so if you get real lazy, you go out there and it look like, I mean, something's going to, and just stripped it, stripped it right down. Nothing there. And you're hoping they didn't get the buds on the top because you can't grow anymore after that. You've got to replant them again. We can get lazy with the things of God and not do them, and the devourer will come. The devourer will come. Are you here? He's looking for opportunity to come. And he will devour your finances. Are you all here or are you going home? He will rob you. Every time you turn around, you'll be losing money, and you can't figure out why. I mean, you'll start singing the hee-haw song. Gloom, despair, agony on me, deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. I don't want to give you the tune because it gets stuck in your head. You won't be able to forget it. <laughs> Gloom, despair, and agony. Oh, I'm sorry. Some of y'all remember that. God says, return to me. Do my ordinances. Do what I said. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Man, what would it be like if your money wasn't getting eaten up by the devourer? Come on now. 
See, I, you, it's not that you can't afford to tithe. You can't afford not to. Because there's a devourer out there looking to rob you every chance he gets. Yet God said, when you follow my ordinances, when you stop robbing me, when you bring it into the storehouse, I'm going to open up heaven's windows. <clears throat> and I'm going to empty out blessings you can't receive, don't even have room enough to receive. And then not only that, I'm going to go after the devourer. I said, I'm coming after the devourer. God said, I'm going to pour blessings on you, and then I'm coming after the one that's been eating up your cash. Been robbing you. Been stealing from you. Been taking from you. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not. He shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call ye blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. God said, you have not kept my ordinance. You have robbed me. How? By not tithing and not giving. Now, there's not there, but it's understood. But if you'll bring the tithe and offering in, hello, I'm going into action. I'm going into action. And I'm going to open up some windows, heaven's windows, and I'm going to empty out on you blessings you can't receive, only have room enough, room enough to receive. And then I'm going after the one who's been eating your lunch. And he's not going to be robbed. He's not going to be casting your fruit in the field before it's time. He's not going to be stealing from you. So much so that people are going to rise up and call you blessed. Hello. I'll never forget somebody in the church walking into my office and sitting down. And I knew their financial situation wasn't good. And look at me and say, I can't afford that. The hardest thing I've ever told, I, honestly, one of the hardest things I've ever told anybody is pastor. You can't afford not to tithe. And they made the decision to obey the word of God. And God turned it around. And it wasn't long where they were making more money after the tithe than they were before not tithing. Is that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Say, ain't that right, Julie? Hallelujah. Year, that was years ago. God just kept blessing. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you, when you obey God's word, when you act, listen, God's written word or when he gives you a specific word that lines up with his word, when you obey God, God moves. And God does. And God, exactly what he said he would do, he does. People, people make the statement, you never know what God's going to do. Don't read their Bible much. Hello? Now, you may not know how he's going to do it, but he's going to do it. He's going to do exactly what he said he would do. Amen. I said amen. You may not be able to see how in the world this can happen. Then you go, but God. The windows got open. Blessings got poured out, emptied out. And the devourer got rebuked. Hello. And did you notice he didn't say for my sake? He said for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You're going to live better off of 90 than you will off of the, of the 100 and not tithe. The lifestyle of the 90 and tithing will be greater than the lifestyle of 100 and not tithing. Because God said it. I said, God said it. <coughs> and we have to be faithful to his word. Hello? Watch God work. Why can you say it with such confidence? I got his word on it. This isn't, this, listen, I can say yeah because I've seen it, I've seen it work. I mean, that's great. But if I'd never seen it work for anybody, I know this. He said it would work, so it works. 
Now, you can't work it and it not work for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll have to finish up next week. I'm not going to finish this morning. because uh, Sorry, like Sunday. Amen? How many love Jesus? Amen. Glory to God. We love Jesus. How much? We love him all the time. How much do we love him? With all our heart. Amen? So don't be a robber. Don't be a, um, don't be a um, one who doesn't follow and keep his ordinances. Do what God said do. Watch God work. Let, put God to, he said prove it. Hello? He said just flat out prove me. It's like me walking up to a kid who's never seen baking soda and vinegar and put together and me saying, hey, guys, you put this together, it's going to erupt. And they're looking at you like, you don't believe me? Do it. All the time knowing that the second they do, hello, you better gauge how much baking soda you give them. <laughs> okay? You might be cleaning up for a week. Are you here? Amen? Knowing, you know, that the second it happens, it's going to erupt. And God said, prove me. You've lied, you, you, you've robbed me. You didn't keep my ordinance. You've been walking under the curse. Bring the tithe and prove me. All the while knowing. All the while knowing. When he's telling you this, that what's going to happen is, he's going to open up the windows and empty and he's going to rebuke the devourer, and you're going to walk in prosperity to the point of being called blessed by others. And he knows it. That's why he said it. He knows what he's going to do. Father, we thank you for the word. Thank you for this message today. We thank you that people are blessed. We thank you we act and live in accordance with the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you all for joining us today. We love you. God bless you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And until next time, God bless you from Faith and Victory Church. We'll see you next time here.